Uh, may I now invite uh, Minister Joe Costello, uh, please, uh, Minister for, for, of State for Trade and Development, uh, to give us some, uh, give his, his opening address. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chairman. And uh, I want to, first of all, tender my sincere thanks to Professor Sarah Moore, the Vice President of the University of Limerick, for hosting this event today, and to thank the Irish Forum for Global Health for likewise jointly hosting it with us. And I must say that uh, Sarah delivered a very fine adage, I'm not sure whether she made it up herself, uh, information is not knowledge, <coughs> I'll go with that, but I'd maybe add something further to it. Information indeed is not knowledge, but neither is knowledge action. And I think um, Father Michael Kelly is a person who has taken information to knowledge to action. And these are the type of people that we admire for the work that they have done. And in many ways, Marcus Horne is in the same vein. While Father Michael Kelly has done it um, in the area of AIDS, the amount of work he has done over the last 50 years has been absolutely unbelievable. But Marcus, representing the ethos of Munster Rugby, um, provides that action, that motivation, that commitment, uh, which is so much part and parcel of, of, of uh, Munster Rugby and which comes in so well into the whole perspective in terms of dealing with the AIDS in a holistic fashion. <coughs> um, I'm delighted to have the honour here to, to, uh, to speak um, on this occasion, Father for, for Father Michael Kelly, the special event. Um, I haven't met Father Michael Kelly before, unfortunately. I'd heard a lot about him, and I was to meet him in the Royal Co College of Surgeons there earlier in the year, but unfortunately I didn't, wasn't able to make it. Neither was I able to, um, to make it to the, the Oris Anouk Duran when he got the Presidential Distinguished Service Award for Irish Abroad in the Field of Peace, Reconciliation and Development. And I certainly would like to extend my heartful um, personal congratulations on that award from our president. <laughs> and indeed, the University of Limerick is the most appropriate place to have this um, occasion, this special event for Father Michael Kelly, uh, because it is an area that is dedicated to educational excellence, but has a high priority on sport and music. Uh, and international relations. So it is, it is an absolutely suitable location. I'm delighted to have the opportunity of addressing you here. It's 24, hour, 24 years since we as a global community started to mark World AIDS Day, which falls, as Sarah mentioned, on the 1st of December every year. <clears throat> and it's over 30 years since AIDS was first described and the impact of the pandemic, pandemic has been devastating over that period of time. Approximately 60 million people have become infected, and over 25 million have died from the disease. <coughs> In sub-Saharan Africa, over 14 million children have been orphaned as a result, a result of AIDS. But great progress has also been made during the time people have come together to fight the e epidemic, and no one more so than the man in whose name our event this evening has been held, Father Michael Kelly. For many of us, Father Michael Kelly needs no introduction, and in many parts of Africa, he is a household name. And indeed, I have come across his name, even though I have not been to Zambia yet. He is a dear friend of Irish aid, and we are delighted to welcome him home at this time of the year. As I said two weeks ago, uh, he got the, president, the Presidential Distinguished Service Award, so he's getting into the habit of coming back to Ireland on a more regular basis. He's, Father Michael is a world-renowned expert uh, on addressing HIV and AIDS to the education sector, and I certainly look forward, I'm sure as all of you do, to listening to what he has to say. <coughs> I was just thinking there, um, while I was speaking to him earlier, and, and while Sarah was speaking, I was listening, of course, multitasking Sarah. Uh, <laughs> But I was just thinking about um, my role as I'm, my portfolio is both trade and development. And I've just come back from Africa, whereas in South Africa on the trade, 
as in Nigeria and Ghana, a bit of trade and uh, development. But in South Africa, one of the things I did was I, um, I, I launched a fellowship for Cather Asmal, Louise Admel, Asmal, his widow, uh, is living in, in Cape Town. And um, Cather, of course, died not so long ago, and he was a minister in the for, minister twice in the South African government and a wonderful campaigner against apartheid, many of you would remember, over many decades here and a uh, lecturer in Trinity College. Uh, and we established 10 scholarships for uh, youngsters from the townships of South Africa. And then before that, I had been in Vietnam, where again we established scholarships uh, for Vietnamese young people to come. And then after that in Ghana, which I was in last week, where we established the uh, memorial lecture for Conor Cruz O'Brien, who was the vice chancellor of the University of Ghana 50 years ago since he was chancellor. Um, and I'm just thinking, uh, wouldn't it be very appropriate if we had an annual lecture, I'm not saying a memorial lecture, but an annual lecture uh, for Father Michael Kelly as well in the university in Zambia, where he is the pro vice chancellor at the present time. So that's something that we might look into, Father Michael Kelly, and we might as well as that see about having a few Irish aid scholarships from the university as well. That's, by the way, I haven't uh, consulted with anybody, but I think that it would be most appropriate. I want to say a few words about how and why the Irish Aid Programme prioritises support to tackle HIV and AIDS. For many least developed countries, HIV continues to be the biggest single obstacle to reducing poverty and to attaining the Millennium Development Goals. HIV is driven by poverty. The greatest burden of the epidemic rests with some of the poorest countries in the world in sub-Saharan Africa, and all of those countries are part of our programme countries there where Irish Aid puts in the greatest amount of funding. Irish Aid supports civil society, partner governments and international organisations such as the United Nations to prevent and respond to HIV. Irish Aid currently allocates approximately 100 million, sorry, yes, 100 million or 18% 80 18 of our budget to treating HIV, AIDS and other communicable diseases. And indeed, we have seen some progress. Our efforts, uh, and that of others, to prevent HIV are working. This is borne out by the statistics. The number of new HIV infections each year is decreasing. Quality of care and access to treatment has improved enormously. There are now 8 million people receiving treatment for HIV in low and middle income countries. With increased access to treatment, people with HIV can live full and active lives. Progress like this gives some hope that this pandemic can be surmounted. But we should not be complacent. A lot of additional effort is needed if we are to win the battle. And indeed, there are areas where progress has become static and there are areas where uh, the, the progress towards the MDGs has not been to anything to the degree that we would have expected in relation to HIV. There are more people living with HIV, AIDS in the world today than ever before, however. There are more people living with HIV in Ireland than ever before. And Anne Mason, who is the manager of the Excellent Red Ribbon Project, and he, who is here with us today, here in Limerick, knows better, this better than any of us. We must do all in our power to support people affected by HIV and work hard to prevent it. And that's why Ireland will continue to advocate for a global response on HIV, and we will continue to prioritise HIV in our developmental programmes. And that will be the case, we hope, going into, into the future, even though it's, there's a budget coming up in a, in a week's time, or thereabouts, and uh, there is still a battle to be fought to, to maintain the level of funding and increase it. Irish aid programmes to prevent HIV have a special focus on youth. Establishing healthy behaviour early, early on in life is much easier than trying to change behaviour later in life when bad habits have become ingrained. And that is why the theme of this event is grounded on music, education and sports as vehicles for positive and healthy living, where the community protects the young and vulnerable and supports them through the formative years and onwards. Community leadership is therefore at the heart of the AIDS response, both in Ireland and in Africa. 
Irish Aid was a co-founder and continues to be one of the main sponsors of the Red Ribbon Award for Outstanding Community Leadership in the fight against AIDS in the world. I am delighted to note that tomorrow, Ireland's Ambassador in Uganda, Anne Webster, is presenting the award to one of this year's winners at a World's Day event in Kampala. Community leadership through sport is very strong in Ireland. This leadership, combined with a world-famous sports ethos, is particularly strong, as I said earlier, in Munster Rugby. And I want personally to thank Marcus Horne for coming to speak to us here this evening. So, in that same spirit of community leadership, I'm delighted that the Red Ribbon Project in Limerick have joined us this evening, and I'm honoured now to be able to invite Ms. Anne Mason uh, to share Red Ribbons and her own perspective with us here tonight. So, thank you all for listening to me, uh, and I want particularly to wish Father Michael Kelly uh, well in his endeavours, and I hope to see him in Zambia before too long and we'll see what we can do about those things I was talking about. Thank you. <laughs>